Welcome to our evening service here from Dunseverick Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us online and may the Lord bless you through the praise and worship of his name and through the preaching of his word. The words to our first hymn are going to appear on your screen. So wherever you are, let's unite our hearts in praise and let's worship the Lord in our first hymn. Thank you for that good singing. Now we want to unite our hearts in prayer and as we do so just locally here we're part of the local community uh, up in the North Antrim coast and there was a, a sad passing away of a sister in the Lord and that was Linda McConaughey and on behalf of the fellowship here at Dunseverick I as pastor we express our sympathy to Alexander uh, her husband and to her children as well and to the wider family circle in this community that have connections in our church here we are thinking about you and praying for you at this time of sadness and bereavement let's now unite our hearts in prayer dear lord we come to thee tonight with thanksgiving in our heart we praise thee for such a wonderful salvation and we are reminded of the price that it cost thee, Lord, to save each and every one of us. And that price was manifested at the place called Calvary, where Jesus died and gave his life, shedding his blood 
to remove the stain of sin off our hearts and to save our souls. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the work that was completed there at Calvary and Lord is able to save to the uttermost. And we pray tonight that if there's anyone watching on via this online service, that they will be touched, indeed transformed by the gospel message and gloriously saved by thy grace. Lord, as we give thanks for thy salvation, we thank you for saving us. We also, Lord, are reminded of our brothers and sisters and we pray for those, Lord, who need a touch in body. Lord Jesus, some unwell at this time, some having undertaken day procedures, others, Lord, facing uh, procedures and surgery ahead. And yet others, Lord, as has been mentioned here, who are sorrowing this evening. And Lord, we pray for those that sorrow. We remember uh, your word through the psalmist that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And we do pray for the McConaughey family, for Alexander and his two children, and also that wider family connection in our church and in our community. Lord, that you would bring comfort to their sorrowing hearts, even this evening and in the days ahead. And Lord, we also give thanks, Lord, still for little Hannah Smith and for her miraculous recovery. But we do remember that family who also grieve uh, after the tragic circumstances away back uh, earlier in the, the year. Lord, we, we just bring before you now this meeting tonight. We pray that you will bless all aspects of it, from the praise that we raise heavenward, Lord, the, the Brook Quartet that will minister to us in song, and the Word of God, we pray, that will speak to our hearts. So bless each one that is watching on online, and bless this church in Dunseverick, and our ongoing ministry, both online and our drive-in services. In Jesus, our Saviour's name, Amen. Friends, I, I just want to uh, think of a, a, a few uh, items now, announcements as it were, and I thank you for joining us again this evening, and we pray that you will be blessed through the ministry of the Word tonight. Thank you, Brooke Quartet, as well, for sending us through a piece and being willing to take part in our service this evening. Do remember then our drive-in services uh, that uh, took place today, and this being the last Sunday in the month of August at 11 and 7. But then remember from next week, there we are still continuing on with our drive-in services at our church and uh, in the morning it will remain at 11 a.m. And we're going to have uh, our brother Nigel Kissick. He will be speaking at the morning drive-in service. And then in the evening we change the time of the dark nights coming into 5 p.m. 5 p.m. when our brother Tom Sanderson will be bringing the word at that drive-in service. And we continue on with our online service as well at 7 so we have lots of ministry there for you to enjoy and we pray that you will be blessed through. Also remember on Tuesday night we both have our prayer and our short time here in the church and our online version and that is at 8pm. So join us whether from the comfort of your home or here in the church. Uh, do remember as well our thought for the day that's posted most mornings there from nine o'clock on our Facebook page and uh, I pray that you're being blessed through these little simple thoughts based upon the word of the Lord. Of course all these announcements are made according to God's good and perfect will. Now it's a pleasure again to welcome uh, Brooke Quartet to our evening service and I thank them for again uh, coming together and uh, rehearsing and providing us with this lovely hymn. And so over to you, Brook Quartet, and may the Lord bless you as you minister to us in song. Thank you.
for your ministry and song much appreciated and may the Lord continue to bless you uh, in your online ministry as well as I know that you're taking part individually and as a group in different driving services at this time friends we turn now to the word of the Lord and I have a question tonight for you and if you have your Bible sir please open them in the book of James now James is towards the back of your New Testament you have the book of Hebrews and then the book of James. And it's James chapter 4 where we find our reading. And we're going to read from verse 14. But we will be referring to verses 13 and 15 as well. But verse 14 is our central verse and theme. Thus saith the word of the Lord. James chapter 4 verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow... For what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. We trust that the Lord will bless this verse to our hearts this evening. Friends, my message tonight is based around this little expression, this little question that James asks of his listeners and speaks to you and me online this evening when he says in verse 14 there, For what is your life? Since the first case of coronavirus in Wuhan in China, 
And then its consequence spread from Asia to Europe and from Europe then on into the Americas where its epicenter is at this time. All of our lives have been impacted and have been changed. James asks a question over 2,000 years ago that is so relevant that you would think that he's living in our days, would you not? So relevant to our society and to our souls. What is your life? I have three suggestions to that question. Firstly, our lives experience uncertain turmoil. Friends, our world has been turned literally upside down. James writes in verse 14, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Now, if I had read this verse out in January of this year, there wouldn't have been much thought given to it. But the reality is, can you tell me what tomorrow's news is going to be? Oh, friends, there is uncertain turmoil in our world and in our lives. Why? In verse 13, James was speaking of his generation and he says, Go to now, ye that say, so that we're all saying, today and tomorrow we will go into this city. So they were talking about travelling. They just took it there for granted that they would be able to travel. And James was saying, no, just don't count your chickens as it were yet. Friends, there's uncertainty because of travel bonds in our days. Isn't that right then? Reading on there, we will go into such a city and continue there a year. Friends, there's uncertainty about time. Before this, people had holidays planned. People had projects planned. And now all of that is in flux. Uh, and the holidays, well, we have been holidaying at home to a large extent and we've seen the evidence of that around the North Antrim coast with an influx or we might say an invasion of local visitors who otherwise would have went to foreign shores. And friends, people planning their ahead, you just can't do that now. You have to have provisos. You have to have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. And there's uncertainty, not just about travel, but about time. And also then in that verse 13, uh, James said of those in his days, and buy and sell and get gain. There's also uncertainty about transactions. Why? There still are people who are furloughed. Certain businesses in the economy there have not yet returned to their normality. Others now are in two or three day weeks instead of full time. And indeed others sadly, tragically are now unemployed because those businesses have not withstood the financial pressures of the lockdown and the consequences then of the reopening. Friends, terms like social isolation and shielding are now part of our common vocabulary, social distancing and separation have been experienced by each and every one of us. So when James speaks here, he speaks about uncertain turmoil and it's as if he's speaking right into our days in 2020. When I think about uncertainty and turmoil, it brings me to this thought. What have we that we can count on? That we know is unchangeable yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 gives us the answer, doesn't it? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. How is he the same, Pastor? He's the same in his person, unchanging. That is holy, humble, and undefiled. Friends, not only the same in his person, the same in his passion. Was Jesus not called the friend of sinners by his enemies? He loved the world. He loves you and he loves me. As he loved people in past days, so he loves us. 
with a love that embraces all. Friends, his person, his passion. What about his pardon? His pardon is unchangeable. When Jesus was dying upon the cross, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Those words of forgiveness that were uttered in the direction of the multitude that was below the cross, who aforetime had cried out, crucify him, crucify him, is still offered to you and to me, my friend, this evening. Jesus the same in his person, his passion, his pardon, also his promise. John 14 and 3, and that speaks about a future prospect. And I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What is your life? There's uncertain turmoil. What is your life? Into our tax. James himself answers on our behalf. It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. If the first aspect to the response to that question about uncertain turmoil deals there with the burden and the brokenness, there the bleakness of, of our situation, well, well, this second answer then, what is your life? It's a vapour. That speaks about the brevity, doesn't it? And it reminds us that we live in unprecedented times. Your life, it's like a vapour. You know, the cattle are, and some cattle now have that wee glass window and you can see the, the colour changing. Others there have like a wee whistle. But all of them there, whenever the water is bubbling up, it begins to uh, vaporize. And you, you see the steam coming out the nozzle or the spout. But it's only there for a few seconds, isn't that right? And then, whoo, it's away. It was David who said to his bestie, his best buddy, Jonathan, in First Samuel 20 and verse 3, as surely as the Lord lives and you and I live, there is but a step between me and death. David realized that life was brief at very best. You see, David was telling us there's two things about life and its brevity. Firstly, it's a short step. There is but a step between me and death. It's a short step. David was in constant danger. There was the threat of the potent there, potentate who was King Saul, who sought to seek him. And there was the threat of the habitual enemies of Israel, who were the Philistines, Goliath and all, who sought to slay him. And you and I are testimony to the graveyards and cemeteries that are in our district and throughout our land that whenever you have occasion to go there and visit, and you begin to read the information on those headstones, you will see there that death is no respecter of gender. You will see there's male and female. Often they're buried in the one plot, man and wife, maybe parents and children. Friends, not only gender, but can I assure you as well, generations. You see the ages there, and some have lived to a grand, ripe old age. And others, we see, are taken in their infancy, taken in their teens, taken in their young adulthood. Friends, uh, the question there, there is but a step between me and death. What is your life? Well, I tell you now, it's a short step. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared. But... David also tells us something else. It's not only a short step. It can be a sure step. It can be a sure step. If you prepare your heart, either for the Lord's coming or for your departure, to go with him, you do that by turning from your sin, recognizing that you were a sinner, and seeking the Lord's face in confession, and saying, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. Forgive my sins. 
and then trusting in Christ for your salvation. Lord, thank you for the work that you've done at Calvary where you died for me, you gave your life for me, you loved me and you shed your blood to save me. And I'm trusting upon that finished and final work of Calvary. Friends, when we do that, then we make ready for that final journey, for that eternal destination. And that becomes a sure step that you and I take. You see, the writer of the Hebrews, he could say this, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment, Hebrews 9 and 27. We remember a person in the Old Testament, and he thought that he was not accountable unto God. It was King Belshazzar of Babylon in Daniel chapter 5 there. Even though he threw a lavish party, friends, he was facing death because King Darius of the Medes and Persians had surrounded the city wall. The gates were closed, the walls were high, and this king thought that he was not accountable unto God. How do we know that? Well, he defied God. He defied God in this way. He took all of the holy vessels that had been transported from Jerusalem and Solomon's temple in the time of his grandfather, King Nebuchadnezzar, and they were taken and they were placed away safely, there securely, but they were brought out by Belshazzar. And he had a great feast and he drank in them and there was a total orgy that occurred there. Then he began to worship these same vessels that were sacred vessels for the use in the worship of the house of the Lord. And he worshiped the gods of silver, gold, stone. You know the story, etc. And friends, he defied God. Even though he was facing death, he was raising his hand and saying, God, I'm not answerable to you. I'm not accountable unto you. Oh, what a dangerous place to be in. But friends, not only did he defy God, he was denounced by God. Oh, God has a way of humbling sinners. And so the finger of God or the hand of God began to write upon the wall. And we're told that this great king with all his bravado, etc., that the color drained from him, the knees began to knock off one another like that. He couldn't hold himself up to stand. There he had hardly a breath left in him. What was this? It was the hand of God, the finger of God, pointing in his direction. Maybe as mine is pointing in yours. And there was that written, so there was upon the wall, as God denounced him. Many, remember Daniel, come and translated it or interpreted it. God have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. It's too late, Belshazzar. You raised your fist to God saying, I will not have you to rule over me. I'll not be accountable to you. God's numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Many tackle. Thou art wed in the balance and found wanting. Perish thy kingdom is divided and give to the Medes and to the Persians. Otherwise, you are Finished. Finito. Too late. And friends, later on that night, he perished as Darius entered in, invaded the city, and took the kingdom from Belshazzar. Oh, what a loss that was. It didn't need to be that way, but it was someone there who thought that he maybe had all the time in the world, but he was living in unprecedented times and didn't realize it and perished. Rather than perishing, may it be that you are persuaded, not almost but wholly, to come to Christ, to turn from your sin and trust in the Saviour. So friends, we have uncertain turmoil. We have unprecedented times. Finally, friends, we have an unsurpassed treasure. What is your life? Well, when we read on into verse 15, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. James was saying to those that he wrote to, 
You need to consider what God is saying to you, what God has done for you, and what God desires for you. You know what the scripture tells us? He says here, for you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. The scripture tells us that it is God's will or God's desire that none should perish. That's you and that's me. That is the extent of his love that none should perish but he gives us a free will to make our own choice i wonder what choice are you making tonight when it comes to roads the lord jesus talked about the broad road and the narrow of which one are you on because both of them have different destinations one leads the narrow to heaven the broad to hell friends what I want to say about this unsurpassed treasure that God has for us. It's his desire that we would live. You know what he has given you as an unsurpassed treasure? It's your soul. Friends, there are many things that you can find and buy and indeed sell on eBay and in some of those online sites. But your soul is something that already has had a purchase price paid for it. And it's not in monetary terms. It was valued by God. And the price set was the life of his son and the shedding of his precious blood upon the cross to redeem your soul. That's the cost. So it was that Jesus had to die to save you and to save me. For we are not redeemed of corruptible things. Peter tells us that, 1 Peter 1 and 18 and 19, such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lamb, without blemish, without spot. Jesus there not only reminds us there about the cost, but about the comparison. He says in Matthew 8 and 36 and 37, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? What shall it profit? He compares it there. He says there's nothing to compare. It is an unsurpassed treasure that God has given to you. The clock of life is wine but once, the hymn writer said. And no man has the power to tell just when the hands will stop at late or early hour. To lose one's wealth is sad indeed to lose one's health is more to lose one's soul is such a loss that nothing can restore i conclude by using the example of the businessman that we read off in luke chapter 12 verses 12 through to 20. friends this man forgot two things he forgot firstly about his sovereign remember in his life he had been productive and he had been prosperous and there was never a question about his integrity his honesty or his work ethic but friends as he built bigger barns this is what he said this will i do he forgot about his sovereign he forgot about his maker his creator he forgot about god Forgot that God had sent the rain, the sun. It was all about him. Firstly, he forgot about his sovereign and he built bigger barns. This will I do. But then he forgot about his soul. As he planned for his retirement and said in verse 19, I'm going to take my knees, eat, drink and be merry. Oh, what a retirement plan. What a retirement party he was going to throw. And then the Lord stepped in. God spoke and he heard but it was too late he says thy fool this night thy soul shall be required of thee friends what a tragedy it was for this man he indeed was one who had all that this world could do offer but it meant nothing in eternity. He had lost the most precious thing that he had. And that was his soul. 
Oh, tonight as I conclude, may it be as you consider this question, for what is your life? Friends, that it is not lost in sin, but it is living for the Savior. The Apostle Paul could write, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What is your life tonight? Are you saved? Are you surrendered to the Lord? May it be if you are not that where you are at this instance you turn to Christ seek forgiveness of your sins say Lord I'm sorry Lord I'm repentant Lord Jesus save me now and then friends for what is your life your life will not be lost but it will be living for Christ and one day living with Christ in glory. Let's pray. And if you want to commend and commit your life to Jesus now, then you pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Cleanse them away. Save my soul now, where I am, thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for your promise that whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save me now. In thy name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you have made that your prayer, then just as I done way back in January in 1985, I committed and commended my life to the Lord and he saved me and has kept me ever since. Please let us know. Send me a text or send a message to another Christian there just to encourage us that we might in turn encourage you in your newfound faith in Christ. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us this evening. We really do count it a pleasure that you watch our online service and we pray that the Lord will bless you in the incoming days of this new week and bless your family as well and meet your every need. We're going to conclude now with a word of prayer and then our final hymn. And please join in in the singing of that final hymn. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for each person that has joined this online service tonight and join with us Lord around the word of God and in the praise of God we pray that you bless them throughout the incoming days of this new week Lord Jesus we pray for any that are unsaved that they will turn to thee now and call upon thy name to save their souls Lord just bless us now bless our loved ones as well and keep your hand upon us now and always in Jesus, our Saviour's name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. And until Tuesday night for our prayer time. And then next Lord's Day for another online service from Dunsavrick. May the Lord bless you. And now let's unite our hearts in praise as we worship God with our final hymn.